This morning's message is titled, Why We Doubt. And I've, I've touched on this topic before because I think it's important for us to first recognize the fact that we will have doubt. We will doubt. You know, I can't help but think as I stand here now and I look at all your faces, how many people right here now are saying, oh no. <laughs> Here we go again with another sermon. Here we go again with more of God's Word. I, I find it... What does it say? I laugh. I amuse. It's amusing. Because um, I truly believe God brings every single one of us here for a purpose. But when we come in, and I've done this in my own life in the past, before I surrendered, I went to a center... An ARC, a Salvation Army, knowing that it was a Christian organization and it was a Christian program. And when they started to preach to me, I said, I don't need this. He don't know what he's talking about. One of the craziest things was in an NA meeting at the center and the speaker stands up and says, I know this is a Christian place, but this God thing isn't for everybody. NA is. <laughs> That's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. One of the reasons why we doubt is because we choose to, because God is a big thing. It's a big thing. And whether we might have had some uh, 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 preconceived ideas of God, maybe we blamed God for our problems, or maybe we just don't believe at all. You know, and the more I think about it over the years, I think it's harder to be an atheist than it is to be a Christian. I don't know how they can get away with just saying that they don't believe in anything. I just can't see it. I've tried to do that. It didn't work. I don't understand how it works for anybody. Because I think it takes a lot of work to deny God. He's created us with a A, 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 a spot for him. Uh, it seems like, and I've said this before, throughout history, if you look at every civilization ever recorded, understood that there was a God, and they sought after that God. So how hard is it then for us then to maybe at least seek after him? But we're looking at why we doubt. Why do we doubt? And that's what I want us to look at this morning. I'm going to start in Psalm 73 all the way at verse 1. And we're going to work through it. And hopefully you will open your minds and your hearts and allow God to speak to you and help you to overcome that doubt. I pray that God increases your faith so that you might have even a mustard seed right, of faith so that you might believe. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for being who you are, Lord. I know it's hard for us to wrap our heads around this, that you are the creator of all things. But there's just so many things that might cause us doubt, that might cause us to lack in faith in you, the creator of all things, and your love for us. And we might doubt the fact that you want to help us but help us, Lord, this morning. Just give us the faith that we need. You've created us in a way to seek you, Lord. And I pray, Father, this morning that every person in this chapel is seeking you with all their heart, with all their mind, and with all their understanding so that we might know your will for our lives. Give us the strength we need, Lord. Speak to me, Father, the words that you would have me to speak this morning. Help me, Lord, as I look through your words, speak through me, the Holy Spirit, so that we know that the words that we hear are true. They are delivered from you. Again, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to receive from you what we need to become the men that you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh God, well that's 74, where am I on the wrong page here? Truly, 
Holy God is good. Uh, it states here, Truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I came so close to the edge of the cliff, my feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. Have we not taken ourselves to the edge of the cliff? Right? Some of us at time even wanted to jump off. Things weren't too good, were they? We've taken ourselves places that we shouldn't still be breathing, should we? I know I'm not the only one that's had guns in his face and has been stabbed and all that. <coughs> kind of I'm not the only one that has OD'd and had to be revitalized, you know, to bring back to life. And We've all been there. We have those stories. We've taken ourselves to a cliff. But that's not just physically. That's spiritual. We've taken ourselves so far away from God that if we look at him as a man, surely he should have turned his back on us long ago. Our family and our friends have. But God doesn't do that, see? He doesn't want us at that cliff. He wants us close to him. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. And then it goes on to explain why he's saying this is where he was. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. I wanted what somebody else had. I wanted to go after. I mean, I remember when I first started using it. It was just so that I could be with other people. So that I could be with this crowd. They look cool. I wanted to hang out with them. I wanted something that somebody else had. Instead of me being concerned with my relationship with God, I was worried about everything else. Do we not? I know I'm not alone. I know every single person here has that same problem. We see the world. We want what it has. We want, even if it's not material things, we just want to be able to be cool like that guy or, or. We're just not okay with being who we are in our relationship with God. We see the world and we want it more than we want God. And that is a problem. We want what the world has. We want what the next guy has. And we steal and we lust after and we put everything we are in obtaining something or feeling a certain way. They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They aren't troubled like other people or plagued with problems like everyone else. Yeah, that's what we perceive of <coughs> them, right? It's what we perceive. We don't even know if that's real. But we seem to want what somebody else has. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace, and their, clo their clothing is woven of cruelty. These fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. In their pride, they seek to crush others. They boast against the very heavens, and their words strut throughout the earth. And in our jealousy, we get mad. Where we get mad at... I mean, as you read through this, you, you don't sense that, that he's like angry. That somebody else can be like this. But why is God allowing them to be like that? Why do I have to live a certain way? And, and even though I, I might have tried the best I could, my life was still hard. And look at theirs. We get angry. And we 
want. We demand. And we can't be okay with just God meeting our needs. And we get mad at God. And so people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. Does God realize what's going on here? They ask. Is the Most High even aware of what is happening? How can they get away with that? And we get angry. <coughs> but we must look at it with honest eyes. We must be honest with ourselves before God. And when we see someone else and we think of them in a certain way and desire to be them instead of ourselves. We are truly separating ourselves from God. We're outside what God's will is for our lives. We must know in our hearts that the desires for stuff, money, and fame bring about. Oh, that was at the. Uh, where was that? Where, 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 was that at the retreat? I just heard that about money is the root of all what? Evil. Uh, I think that was two Sundays ago in this chapel. I said that. Now, I think it goes beyond money, of course, because money can also do good things. But money is part of this whole problem with wanting something more than the Creator. Wanting something more than God. And money, we see, is how we, well, obtain it, supposedly. I, I think we've obtained a lot of stuff without money in the past. I don't think we've needed money all the time to get what we wanted. I think it's the fact that we covet, we lust after, we, we desire things of this earth more than we desire the creator of this earth. I think that is the main problem. Look at these arrogant people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Was it for nothing that I kept my heart pure and kept myself from doing wrong? How come I go through all this every day trying to do right before God and I have to work at it? And these people just cruise around in nice cars and don't seem to have to work at it. Well, first of all, again, that's our perception. I don't think anybody has anything that's just so easy. It might be easier than what we got to go through. But what's the gain? What's the gain? Are you going to gain a new shirt? Are you going to gain some money in your wallet? Are you going to gain internal life? Hmm. All I get is trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. Every morning. If I had really spoken this way, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. But what a difficult task it is. Then, one day, I decided that I'm going to spend some time with God. And try that out. Instead of all the stuff. <clears throat> Instead of trying to go after what the next guy has. Instead of worrying about how come he seems cool and I gotta, I'm freaking out. One day, I decided, you know what, God? It's your will, not mine. <laughs> and the money didn't matter anymore. The stuff didn't matter anymore. One day, I submitted myself before God humbly and said, Lord, it's yours. I am yours. Do with me as you will. Whatever I need to do every day of the week, every moment of the day, that's what I want to do. And I found that getting a good job that paid a whole lot didn't seem to matter as much anymore. Having a certain name on the side of my car didn't really matter as much anymore. And I was okay. 
I was all right. Because, see, going after all this other stuff and freaking out and worrying about how much of this I'm going to get. And, but where am I at in life? I'm st it's, it's no different than, than the life that I lived going after dope or making sure I had enough money to buy a half gallon of vodka or whatever that might have been. Freaking out, worrying about what I'm going to get. If I still am that same person while I'm clean, worrying about if I can get what this guy's got or I can sound as good as him in a meeting, even, then I'm still just as bad off as I was putting a needle in my arm. I'm just not sick, physically. I'm still sick spiritually. I'm still spiritually sick even if I'm not using, but my life is all about what the next guy's got or how he sounds or his girlfriend. What's it all about? Why we doubt? We doubt because we expect God to give us everything. We want what the next guy has. That's why we doubt. Well, if God really loved me, wouldn't I have... Or shouldn't I be this far in my program? Or shouldn't I still be able to do this? Why we doubt? It says here, the psalmist had begun to wonder whether following God's program was worth it. It seemed to him that evil people were happy and prosperous. It didn't seem to make sense. But then the psalmist came to his senses as he thought about the destiny of the wicked. God's justice will ultimately be served. We all know that our addiction seemed to work for a while, but with time it became destructive. We know that. God's plan is the only recovery program leading to wholeness and eternal life with him. We should be wise to follow his plan, no matter how difficult it may seem to us today. Or as we're dealing with things, as we're working through things, as we're sitting with our counselor or our sponsor, or we're sitting in a meeting, thinking about the things of our lives, and how come this guy has got the same amount of clean time, but he sounds great. Well, maybe it's because he ain't being honest. Then I realized how bitter I had become, how pained I had been by all I had seen. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet I still belong to you. You are holding my right hand. You will keep on guiding me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. We, we really desire and lust after what other people have, but would anybody else treat us like that? How many people do we hold up on a pedestal or we want what they have? Will they treat us like this? that even after we've done the things that we've done, will they still love us? These people that have everything? No, God does. God does. Even though we stomp our feet and complain and cry like babies, We turn our back and we run away from them. We harm ourselves and those around us. And he still loves us. The psalmist had begun to think that God was unjust and had a hard time believing that God was loving and good. In these verses, however, he realized how foolish he had been. God was waiting to restore his relationship with the doubting psalmist. 
We need God's help if we want to succeed in recovery. But if we cannot believe that God is good, we will hardly be able to entrust him with our lives. Like the psalmist, we need to realize that God does love us and that his plan for us is what's best. If we trust in God and seek to follow his will for us, he will keep on guiding us with good counsel. We doubt, again, because of where we are. We're here, on this world. There will always be things that we seek after. Temptations that glit, that shine in our face. There will be others that seem to be happily engaging in the things that we know in our hearts is wrong. And we will doubt whether or not the choice to follow God and not the ways of this world are right. But we need to look at the whole picture. We need to realize what these things are and who these people are that we would want to emulate or be like. And then we have to look at God and make a decision. Is it them or him? Is this important or is he important? Verse 25. Whom have I ha who, whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health might fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. But those who desert him will perish. I thank God that he welcomes us back when we notice that we've gone the wrong direction. Because it says, for you destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my shelter, and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things that He does. But as for me, how good it is to be near God, that when I find myself drawing closer to things outside of Him, away from Him, that we put more concern and, and, and focus on than Him, the more I hurt. But when I spend my time drawing closer to Him, and I spend more of my time communing with Him, I find that I have less pain, I have less confusion, and I have less doubt. So we need to start separating ourselves from the things that cause doubt, and focusing on Him. That's what it's all about. Living for God and not the world. And sharing Him with others. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for Your Word. I thank You, Lord, for its truth. I thank You, Father, for who You are. I thank You, Lord, that You've created us in a way to seek You. We know that You exist. Help us, Lord, to draw closer and closer and closer to You. Help us, Lord, to go further and further and further away from the things of this world that cause us pain and doubt. It's not just about substances. It's about us desiring something other than you. That's what causes doubt. So I pray, Lord, that you increase our faith just now that we make a commitment this day to put our faith, put our lives, put our wills into your hands so that you might guide us, direct us, strengthen us, help us. <clears throat> we need your help, Lord. 
Thank you, Father, that you made it possible for us to come into a close and personal relationship with you. And I thank you, Lord, for those over the past weeks that have made decisions, Lord, to, to come into this personal relationship with you through Christ Jesus, Lord. And I pray that each and every person here recognizes how important this is to receive from you freely your grace, by your grace, freely given salvation through your Son, Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that each person in this chapel, each person, Father, that comes through these doors of this building, Father, come into this relationship with you so that they might know you. And they might desire after you. They might seek you with all their hearts and with all their minds and with all their understanding, Lord. I pray, Father, that we recognize that we are sinners and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves but to accept from you your Son, Christ Jesus, into our hearts as our personal Savior. We repent of our sins, Lord. We, we turn away from the things of this world that would cause us to fall and to doubt, Lord. And we put them at your feet, Father. I thank you, Lord, for making that possible. And we've come into this relationship with you through your Son, Christ Jesus. And we receive from you then the Holy Spirit, the Counselor who guides us, Lord. As we walk along this path that you've laid out before us, we need help, Father, or we will be pulled, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that you make sin known to us through your Holy Spirit. You point out the things of this world that we need to go away from, Lord. We, you point out to the things of, of others, Lord, we see help, we, we need, they need help, Lord, and we can share your, your salvation with them, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you give us the, the courage to do so, just get out of our, our comfort zone and open our mouths. And I thank you, Lord, that when we do fall, when we do make mistakes, that Jesus not only died on the cross for our sins, but he ascended into heaven to be our advocate so that when we do stumble and we come to you with mournful hearts, you forgive us of our sins so that we can stay on, get back on and, and work on and stay on that path that you've laid out. So I pray, Father, this morning that we work these things out with you, that we humble ourselves before you and we make decisions this day that need to be made so that we might come into, draw close to, and maintain our relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you care for us in this way. You're not only the creator of all things, but you love us so much that you make it possible for us not just to live and breathe here, but to be at home with you one day. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.